Hi, I'm Talia. Hi, I'm Matthew. And, and we, we are, are the, the critics. critics. And first, holy cow, what happened to your Buddha? Holy cow, indeed. <laughs> Very much so. We fed it. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> no, it's a Mother's Day gift for my mom. She loves Buddhas. Um, so happy Mother's Day to yeah. all the moms who happy watch Mother's us. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Uh, but back onto film. Um, <laughs> so big. <laughs> <laughs> the movie that we're reviewing this week is the latest Woody Allen, uh, Irrational Man. Um, and I think first off, just to give where we are, I think it's so awful, it's good, Talia absolutely loathes and hates it. But there's, so there's not a lot of nice things to say about this, mm. but let's get into it. So, the first thing is, I think if you're a Philosophy 101 student, this is your best film ever made for you. Yeah, because you get all the weird references, which we yeah. got also, we did Judas Prudence. But I mean, it doesn't yeah, make we a weren't nice... excited. Yeah, it doesn't make a nice watch. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's a lot of philosophy going on in here. And it just comes across as really pretentious in terms of the philosophy and in terms of general. It's very much uh, another name for this could be the white privilege film. Because, <laughs> um, you know, my friend. I who, didn't see that. No. <laughs> but it's. Uh, the instance is like, oh, you know, since yeah, like my horse riding friend. You know, like, but even even me, I don't horse ride. <laughs> um, you know, my family just started collecting really expensive art. Yeah, she, and my parents just bought a war hall and they had a gun. And it was big. Really yeah, and this is going to Oxford to do our first grade. Yeah, um, I don't know if it intended for itself to be like that, but either way, I was annoyed throughout the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. so it was just very pretentious. It was, and also it was like one on one level philosophy. Mm. Um, and one on one level existential crises, and then most annoyingly is that the moral question that it sought to ask was was about, um, you know, why are we here and is murder okay? Are just overdone questions. Um, and it was put together in a very unsophisticated way. Yeah. I mean, we could have that type of question, but in a higher level, uh, better put together form. You know. Yeah. It was just told too simplistically yet pretentiously and you know Like I think as much I mean we were divided also on Solace, but I think Solace even dealt with its question. Much better. better. Much yeah. better. That was a better form. Yeah. Um so from yeah, if you're a philosopher and wants to you'll like it. Um maybe. Uh but the yeah, the movie itself I don't know, it just didn't note anything for me. Yeah, so I think it's, I think apart uh, from our main character... They were weak, weak characters throughout yeah. the film. Everyone was weak. I liked Joaquin. Uh, the cast was good. Yeah, it should have been better. It should have been better, but I think they were tied down by the script and possibly the directing. Because it was, I don't know, to me it just felt contrived the whole time. Yeah, and it felt like the characters sort of knew that they, they were, were in the movie. movie. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and so that came across. Um, I think it's... Yeah, and I think ultimately when you come to the final scene, Judah's like, well, that was... Stupid. Much, much to do about nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of don't, don't gain much. It didn't much. even build <laughs> up too much. Uh, like, you didn't feel like it reached a point and then, okay, you know, the, there was suspense or whatever, there wasn't. It was just obvious from the beginning. Yeah, but also, I mean, we follow the crisis of a particular... I'm not going to try and spoil too much, but we follow the particular crisis of somebody who isn't there at the end. Yes, yes, And so yes, your yes. growth with that character actually doesn't achieve anything. Yeah. And the character that supposedly has the highlight at the end isn't a character that you've really followed. Yeah. Um, and is portrayed, I don't think, particularly well. But then we always said, that is what happens in a Woody Allen film. You go in thinking you know what it's about, and then you come out being like, "What just happened?" But you I feel like, but I feel like there's more like other Woody Allen's I've watched. There's more of like a, I feel, I feel awful now. Like this, like it's hit me more. This was very much I just laughed it off. Yeah, and they asked quite a serious question, moral question, but then it ended up being, like the ending was almost comedic. Yeah, so I mean, for me, I I still on a scale, like it more than I hate it. Um, but for me it was just because, and maybe I was just in the right mood for it, is I just laughed at all of the stupidity. I'm not out loud, but I chuckled the whole way through. I mean, when we finished and you turned to me, like, I was actually laughing. Um, 
so I just I just think it's it was so bad and so pretentious and so uh, yeah and so yeah so bad and so pretentious that I think it was funny and heartfelt not heartfelt funny and like taking the Mickey out of itself almost um, I wouldn't recommend it to people definitely and I wouldn't run to go and watch it again and I'd only watch it again if I was doing a Woody Allen marathon but I wouldn't you know hate the thought of having to watch it again. Okay, Matt. We disagree. Yeah. I hated it. I could maybe I was in the wrong mood to, to watch it. No, you were in a you were in a normal mood. Yeah. And also even if it meant to be um aware of itself as a film, yeah. It still didn't do it for me. Like I've watched a lot of films like that and they've done it better, you know. This was contrived, pretentious as we said already. Uh the whole just the way the characters interacted was so strange and unnatural. Uh, intellectual masturbation for Woody Allen, I think, in my opinion, uh, with the constant philosophy references that were just like, who talks like this in normal life? No one. No one. Um, also, <laughs> the constant narration telling us what was happening when it was very obvious what was happening. Which is just um, an indication of weak script. Yeah, but also a Woody Allen yeah, okay. trait as well. And the constant soundtrack was annoying. It was the same one over and over again and was just irritating. Yeah. I was just annoyed by it in general. I don't know, yeah. I didn't enjoy it at all and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Also, I mean, the trailer, just the last thought that I had, the trailer made a big deal about the uh, love relationship between the professor and the student. Which, which yeah. Which in the end didn't actually do anything. Nope. Like, it happens, but... It doesn't add or detract or... I thought his relationship with the other, with the chemistry professor was more, it was yeah. more uh, deep. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was and more And what happened as a result of it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, yeah. Really. Okay. So, ratings. Can I give thumbs down? You can. It's our first thumbs down ever. Wow, that's intense. I'm going half. You're not going to, you're not going to die if you watch this movie. Your soul will. <laughs> Your intellect might. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Yeah. Uh, we don't recommend this film, but you can watch it if you <laughs> live life on the edge. Um, you can check out our uh, Twitter and Facebook links and Instagram link in the description box below to find out what we're up to next. Uh, I'm Talia. I'm Matthew. And this has been our review, or more like hating session, of, of Irrational Man.